All right, guys, welcome to the Higher Level Live. We've got John Wetmore in the studio with us today. What's up, man? What's up, dude? It's good to see you. I'm happy to be here. We're happy to have you. Guys, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notifications button. Um, we greatly appreciate that. So, dude... You, you, I just asked you a question like 20 minutes ago, like where you guys were at when you partnered with Integrity and where you're at now. Yeah. How many, so it was, you were doing roughly 2,500 families a month. Yeah. And now you're doing. Oh, 12, 13,000. Jiminy Christmas. And, and yeah. how many years? Like since Integrity or ever? Since Integrity. Uh, February of 2020. So just over two, two, not even two and a half yet. Ch Dude, that's insane. Yeah, it's been nuts. Okay, so, and and you, we're so grateful you took time away from your family, away from your team to come up here and share with us. Could you talk about that? Like, that's, it, it's almost mind-boggling, that much growth in two years. Can you, can you pinpoint what happened, where it came from, what you did, how you used integrity to, to catapult this business, anything? Yeah, it got out of the way of a lot of great people. <laughs> <laughs> I get way more credit than I deserve, dude. You know, um, yeah, I mean, we got a good team. We got a lot of a lot of people who want who are hungry. We got quite a few integrity partners in the agency now. Another three direct. There's I don't know two or three more in depth, and you know, uh, I think I think we have a lot of people that take advantage of the opportunity. Really good at following what Sean put together in the path, and not trying to overcomplicate things. And, sure. You know, copy and paste, dude. It's uh, we just got a lot of great people, man. I'm telling you, I get way too much damn credit. I, I hear you on that aspect of it, and 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 I can say I agree to an extent. Yeah. <laughs> but like I I I hear what you do when you train. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, I lost my voice. Um, but there's a lot that goes into. Yes, you're right. It's buy leads, set appointments, run appointments. Yeah. That's it. The production side. That's it. For sure. The the recruiting side is find people to talk to. Yeah get them in and then help them sell insurance. Yeah. But there's a lot that goes into that mindset, yes, staying, there you is. know, staying even. Yeah. So while, and, and, you know, we're, I'm with you, you know, getting credit for things makes, makes you feel uncomfortable and, and I can appreciate that, but you're really good at, at getting people to understand stuff and, and obviously getting them to move. Yeah. So that's the magic, right? I can get people paid, dude. I know how to do that. That's right. I know how to do that. Um, you know, and I think that's, I just, for me, kept it simple um i looked at it like selling dude where when when i finally watched what y'all were doing because again keeping for those i don't know i was not at the top end of production early in my career here <laughs> i had to go like oh that's what they're doing but when i figured out dude 30 appointments a week do it every week no matter what the consistency and then the skill set comes and it lets you ignore the noise okay and the, and the stuff right you know what i mean all the all the things we get emotional about don't matter Dude, I took that exactly to the building side at the same time. Yeah. So I figured out both at the same time. I'm like, this is identical. Right. So if I talk to enough people, right, and I'm going at it consistently, I don't really need to worry about the people that don't do anything. You know, I can keep it simple. Okay. Talk to them about, hey, here's how you get licensed. Here's how you get in the field. Here's how many leads you need. Here's the steps. Here's the process. Here's everything you need to do. A, B, C, D. And if you do it, I'm pretty sure you do pretty well because I see a lot of people that do. And if you don't do it, dude, can you just leave me out of it? Like, what do you need me for? <laughs> okay. Does it make sense? And yeah. I, I became, I truly became, you know, I, I really got good at identifying what I was looking for. Cause I was, I did get frustrated a lot. Yeah. Um, working with agents at the beginning, but I learned I got frustrated because there was this lack of, my expectations were off due to a lack of clarity. Okay. All right. And much like in home, dude, if you don't ask, if you don't ask good questions in the house, it's hard to solve a problem. Sure. It's hard to get checks, you know, because now you're just selling. Right. And with, with agents and building, if I wasn't asking good quality questions to understand kind of who they were, where they were at in life, where they wanted to go, the things they were willing to sacrifice, what they were willing to put in it, you know, and I'm just throwing stuff against the wall and I'm right. selling all the, you know, the checklist of all our great right. things. That's right. And I'm throwing, I mean, dude, I'm not really, I'm not really solving problems. So for me, I went, I'm going to talk to a lot of people. I'm going to qualify them kind of like a financial inventory in my head. Okay. Ask a lot of questions, understand, see if they're willing, their willingness to do this at a level it takes to do it. I only know how to do it one way. Sure. High activity. That's right. 
<laughs> yeah, no doubt. I'm wor- you get good later. You know, and at the beginning, I was trying to teach everybody to get really good. I was trying to teach phone script and teach in home and teach. Right. I mean, there's, there's a place for that. But for me, if you're not running enough, I'm like, I'm not that good. I don't know how to, I don't know how to, I don't want, and I didn't, I learned, dude, if I spent too much time coaching people on like the, the little details, like the, how to overcome objections, and right. how to stay on the phone, which again, there's a place for that. Sure. But if I do it with the wrong person, I learned I'm like validating that they can be really good with limited effort because my words are so amazing. Right. You know what I mean? And no, I, that makes sense. And I just decided to stop doing that. And I, and it became easier to coach people if they hit a activity threshold, assuming they want to do this full time. You know what I mean? You want to do a part-time different conversation and day one in the field, different conversation. But dude, after you've been here a couple months, it's like, what are we doing? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's not a lot to talk about if it's not more activity or building. Sure. And I just got really good at having like those, boundaries if you will not in a mean way right like i knew what i was looking for man you know not just like in the field i was looking for 30 easy appointments i wasn't trying to right. arm wrestle 30 people for appointments that's right I, i'll pay for the luxury to have my time back and it worked the same way with building man i just decided i was going to talk to so many people that i could then again i'm i, I learned dude i was as 1099 as they are <laughs> they ain't got to work with me i ain't got to work with them that's right so i just found who i was looking for which for me was someone that was coachable was willing to work hard, did the things they said they would do, and if they couldn't do those things, they communicated. Sure. You give me those four, dude, I'm I'm easy to work with. If you don't, I, and as I told them, I'll probably quit you before you quit me. That's great. And, and so that and that's where I think a lot of struggle is. I love that what you said about the expectations because I, I lived in that world yeah. where I expected people to mm-hmm. work as hard as, as I did or want to make – as much money as I did or help as many families as I did. And not everybody does. No. So what were some of the questions you asked to identify that? You said you qualify them just yeah. like you do with the financial yeah. inventory. Yeah. So for me, the expectation became you're going to do what you say you're going to do. So I can ask someone questions in a sense that you got, you're going to tell me the things you're going to do. Okay. And then I just have to, then I just get to watch. And hold them like to, or yeah. not even hold them accountable. They hold themselves accountable. Because again, I've told them either you do what you say you're gonna do, or if you can't, you communicate. And if you don't, like I'm out. leave me out of it. Yeah. I, not me. And what's weird is and I always had this thing, dude, where I can give you the steps. I follow them, I learn them. So I didn't invent them, but I can give them to you. And if you don't want to follow them, all good. But I got one rule. You can never complain to me. Okay. And I lived by that, dude. Because it kept my emotional sure. tank from draining. Yeah. Which the first couple of years was brutal in that sense. So for me, dude, I really want to understand people in the sense of like their work situation. Are they going to be full-time, part-time? Can they afford to be full-time? Because you know how many agents, and there's a ton watching. They're like, they do this full-time right. and they run 10 appointments a week. Right. Or they have no money, which I got you. I had no money when I started either. Right. But if you don't have the ability to, invest into leads you literally can't be full-time if you want to be full-time there's not enough people to talk to that's right right so i wanted to i wanted to make sure that i understood where people were at so i could give them a proper path okay right if they got no money dude they need to have a job does that make sense absolutely it is what it is and i i'm like you can't do this full. you literally can't do it full-time if you wanted to with a couple hundred bucks so for me it was really understanding their work dynamic their financial dynamic their family situation you know, um, the willingness to sacrifice stuff, you know, was a spouse on board or not? That's did, a big did, one. Does she know or he know that you're even getting into this? Is this the 4,732nd thing you've got into? Right. You know what I mean? Are you, sure. Do you, have you talked to the family about your willingness to, maybe you got to get licensed, go through class, the time sacrifice you're going to have to put in to a new career. You know, and I, w- I just want to understand the dynamic so I can give a, help them with a schedule and a lead plan. And a, whereas before I was, yeah, do run this schedule. This, How yeah, Monday, yeah. Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and they're like, "Dude, I have soccer and I have right. Bible study and I have this and I can't and all these things that I assume they would sacrifice because I did, sure, but they weren't willing to." So for me, it was understanding of their situation. First of all, they got to understand what they're getting into. Leads right. ten and nine commission only, dude. Those are the first three questions. If you don't understand that, I'm out. Okay. If you understand that, then I'm proceeding to just understand them. Again, those those few things, they're they're dynamic more than anything. They're again their willingness to sacrifice stuff and their willingness to go through the process and learn. 
And I would ask people, man, if, you know, I don't know how good you're going to be. I don't, I don't know how much you're going to study. I don't know how much you're going to retain things. I don't know how many questions you're going to ask. I don't know if you're going to get on trainings or not. So I don't know how long this is going to take you. Right. But my question is, if you're going through that process and it starts out rough based on your expectation and 10 people kick you out or hang up on you or tell you to pound dirt, how are you going to handle that? Are you the type that's going to like curl up and cry? Or are you going to seek guidance and coach? Like, who right. are you? Sure. And I would just ask, dude, and it, you start having a conversation. It, you figure it out pretty quick. I'm sure. Dude, that's so priceless. And, and I think it's crazy because the longer we do this, if I feel like the more patient I've, I've become. Yeah, for sure. Um, because we just, it's so wild how we assume so much stuff. And the, the whole life, like, it's not normal what we do. No, you got to be wacko to do this. To an, yeah. For to sure. an extent. <laughs> I agree, 100%. <laughs> and, and so we, again, I think if you just plug people in and you give them what they need, not what you want them to have, Correct. I think they'll eventually come around if, if they hang around long enough. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, and, you know, people can change. You can, you can also help people's vision and stretch people and push people and you know what I mean? The right people. Yeah. You can do that with time. It's not, there's not like a, this is the plan forever. You know what I mean? I can, I can, I can work with people. And as I see people get their eyes open, if I can get them paid quick. Yeah. It's like when you go to the mall and those, uh, they give you like the, the food on the, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, why do they want you to try it? Because you, they hope you like it. You come back. Correct. Get more. So if I can get people paid quick and get them to taste it, they're more than likely going to stick around. Okay. You know? Treat them well. Do what I say I'm going to do. It's pretty sure. easy. But I don't sugarcoat it, man. If you if you only put in X amount of effort, dude, this is going to be rocky. It's going to be inconsistent forever. Right. It's going to, it's going to, there's going to be a lot of bad days. You know what I mean? If you're not running a bunch of appointments, it's, it's, this is, this is, buckle up. Buckle up. And there could be bad days even if you are running Correct. appointments. That's like, kind of my point. No doubt. You know, this I, isn't a hope I get lucky kind of business. No, it's, it's not. not. It's really not. I think to me, it, the best part about this is watching people go through the stuff and you've a lot of stuff people go through you've had conversations yeah. about but they chose either not to listen or they didn't hear it right yeah. correct and, and and you don't get a i don't get mad because they just didn't hear it i didn't explain it right or they didn't hear it but the lessons that they learn are, are to me invaluable because i've watched you go through a bunch yeah, buddy. uh yeah buddy we, i mean and and i don't think you get to where you're at without without going through all you that can. stuff it taught you who you are. It is. Right? It gets you that thick skin, you know? So when you, when you, because you, you're right, your number, your producer numbers weren't, weren't, weren't great at all. Not at the beginning, no. But then. I, mean, I learned how to do 40 plus. But yes, it took, you did. It took a year and a half for me to figure that out. And that's okay. That's what I don't think we talk about. Enough. Like, we always talk about these people to come in and crush it. Like, Brian Urbanski, the guy you met, said, no, dude, he had Hall of Fame his first year. That's not, I mean, it's not normal. No. Right? It took you a year and a half. It took, I mean, counting the, the three, four years I'd done this before FFL, it took me five years. Yeah. So there's no, no, there's nothing bad in that. What, what flipped that switch for you? What was it that got you to understand really what it took to, to help 40 families a month and, and hit Hall of Fame? That it was just numbers, man. It's like that just, I had a conversation with Mark Mead and that really clicked for me then. You know, and we were looking at it because I was, I was a student of the business. I was, I was always studying. Right. You know? I definitely learned how to sell twenty five year cash back by watching your stuff. I mean, oh. I saw the majority of that in, sure. the, in the mortgage world. And then, uh, you know, I was, I was so focused on like the skill set piece because I'm not a natural sales guy. I'd never been in sales. I never done anything like that. I've never been on phones. So I was always, I was so focused on the skill part. Okay. That I just. Dude, it sounds weird, but I just didn't know that if you just ran twice as much. I'd it sounds <laughs> stupid coming out of my mouth, but I truly didn't get it, man. Right. And when I started just to turn up the volume and forget everything else, literally, it was just like, if I invest, it just after the conversation with Mark, I'm like, if just I invest double, I can run double, I'll make double. And dude, I didn't account for like momentum and right. the skill set, and it tripled for me. Yeah, that's what happens a lot of times, you know, and I was like, and, and the emotional part, I was able to let go of that because you trip over a couple sales a week sure. when you run enough, no doubt, you know, whereas before I was, and I wasn't as frustrated because now my days were full. The days actually went by faster 
when you're working. When I had 10, 10 appointments a day. <laughs> then when I had four, it was right. like, this is brutal. Right. And so it, it just it just clicked, man. And w- one thing, when I figure something out, I'm not slow to implement. Okay. I might be slow to figure it out. You know, I'm a little oblivious with some stuff. But once I get it, dude, I turn it on like right away. So I went from like 10, 12 families a month to like 40. Like overnight. Yeah. 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 Dude, that's funny. I did, um, we had our conference on Saturday, a couple of Saturdays ago, whatever it was. Um, and I talked about, I have 10 things that I think are, the, and one of them is like, take criticism and change fast. Yeah. Um, set your expectation. Like people will let you down if you let them. Like all the stuff you're right. talking about, it's crazy how we, and everybody always wants like some secret recipe. There yeah. is none. I remember Sean and I way back in the beginning, uh, we're going to a Phillies game, Eagles game. Um, it was me, him and, Savannah, Trevor, Frankie, Elena, and, and Jamie. And I don't even know if Tina went. But we're riding up, and he's like, how's it going? I'm like, it's going. He's like, what do you, how many families a week you help? And I'm like, you know, or a month. I'm like, like 25, 20 to 25. He's like, and you're paying your bills. You got some extra. He's like, I was like, yeah, I got a little extra. He's like, imagine this. What if you just helped 40 families? Yeah. Now you would have an extra fifteen thousand yeah. dollars to invest back in yeah. your business i'm going like the second part's way more profitable and, yeah and i'm going yeah. like and it just like you said it just clicked and yeah. i'm going like why didn't i think of that yeah you know but it's crazy when you're in the fight sometimes you don't see it it's true f- the same way somebody that's looking you know you, in the box you think it's going to feel the same you know what i mean that's what i did i'm like if i do more it's just going to be the same more of the same right and just the freedom of that made it different. There was more stuff, sure, but it made it easier to deal with because the profitability was a lot higher. Yeah, you know. And I think, you know, for me, as you're saying, the expectations thing, like that became everything for me. It's just being really transparent about what this business was, and um, you know, making finding ways to communicate with. Like I had to really learn what people heard when I spoke versus yeah. what I said. And I learned, like in the house. Most of us are really dynamic there. Like we don't allow a client to see our emotions. You don't let them see how frustrated you might be in a situation. Sure. You communicate to clients differently. If you're sitting with seven year old grandma or 25 year old, you communicate differently. Right. You know what I mean? And, and you don't usually bring your stuff into the house. Right. But with, a, with an agent, we tend to be like one trick pony. Right. We, that how we're dynamic in a house. It's like, you know, you turn that on. No doubt. You're about to go in a house, you turn it on, and you like, it's like, That's right. go. That's right. We leave the house, and we tend to turn that off and then call agents. Right. And I had to learn to have that same level of intentionality wow. with agents. And when I'm speaking to an agent, watch their reaction. And if, I, if I'm if i in a house and I say something a certain way and it, it they respond the incorrect way, I'm like, ooh, I got to adjust the way I deliver that right. so I can control it. Sure. Do the same with agents. It's just people. This is just a people business. So I learn if I'm like – Working with agents, they're all very different, so I right. can't treat them all the same. And then I have to learn how they hear me, so I can. I started to watch body language and right. the way they respond, and th- and I go like, instead of blaming the agent for not doing A, B, or C, how about I look at the way I delivered it to get right. them to not hear me? Dude, that's huge. Man, it that changed it. analogies and stories and and paying attention to my delivery changed everything for me, dude. And I got I got. I got really good at being able to deliver a message without offending people. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That, well, and you, took time. <laughs> I'll never forget the, like one of the first times I ever did a training with you, we were in St. Louis. I don't know if you remember this and you were up there talking about someone asked you a question about some mortgage protection to like a 25 year old, 24 year old. Yeah. And you were laughing and like you, what you said was complete. It was awesome. You were like, you essentially tell them like, you have to do this. Yeah. You're 25. Like yeah. stop being an idiot. You have to do it. And then you said some of the, and the agent that asked you the question, I think, you know, the message was so good. And I don't know if they heard it because of how, and again, we've all, you know, yeah. I was, I was guilty of the same thing. The we've all learned better. to deliver a little bit better, yeah, buddy. <laughs> but that's great. But I said that my son, I said, you know how, like when I go to see my mom, like I never cuss, I don't use the F word. Really? Now I leave it there and I could, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just. But I, it's that switch, yeah. dude. I've never thought about it just like that. But that's, dude, that that's priceless. Yeah. Um. All right. So I'm gonna wrap. Can you give? Because I I talked to you quite a few times before we you know got into talks with integrity as I was in, yeah. you know about books and being organized and doing us. Can you give any of these folks? I mean, dude, you could talk for hours and I could listen to you. 
But the biggest advice you could give them for having a clean, good looking business, that integrity might go, you know what? I want to partner with you. I want you to be a managing partner of integrity marketing group. Yeah, I mean, I think anyone running a business should know their number. Like I always find it weird when I ask people, they're like, well, what's your, this number, whatever right. it is. And they go, uh, I'm like, I don't know. Do you think Chick-fil-A knows how much chicken they sold yesterday? <laughs> You know, yeah, I mean, it'd be, yeah. weird. it'd be weird if they didn't. It would be, you but know? I don't think more people don't know than do know. I think personally, yeah. more people don't know than they do Agreed. know. Agreed. I was point. one of them too. Yeah, I know. So it's like, you don't have to be amazing with numbers to pay attention. Okay. You know, so I think it's just, it. it's like, there's a, there's a line, dude, because some people want to be too over analytical and okay. I was never, I'm pretty okay. analytical, but I'm not, a, it doesn't slow me down. I, I use it to like do more. Okay. You know, so I think at, at this stage, if you're not like you, if you're not amazing at it, dude, hire someone. If you're at this, dude, if you're starting out day one, don't stress over this stuff at all. Right. Like if you're in the weeds and you're getting there and you're making you're like, there's some cash flow and you're like, you're kind of in the neighborhood of the conversation. Yeah. You know, get your stuff clean. And if you don't know how to do it, uh, okay, pay for it. That's you're right. making money, pay for it. It should be organized. It should be clean. And you should know your stuff because at the end of the day, they are buying you and the business. You know, and I, I, I think like, you know, your stuff, when we talked, it was like, Ooh, let's get this organized. Yeah, no doubt. You know, so you can have a conversation about what your business looks like, what the revenue is, what the expenses are, the actual expenses, not correct, like the, correct. Not like the, Oh yeah, I wrote that off. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that's what I <laughs> didn't know? understand. And either. if you do it, it's okay, but know it. That's right. You know, so that's I, right. I, 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 you know, they're looking for certainly consistency and they're looking for, you know, projected revenue too. Yeah, and, and you should know, especially if you're again, please, if you're day one, do, don't don't just ignore us right now. But like, if you're in it, you should know X amount. And just no different than X amount of leads is X amount of revenue on sure. personal. You should kind of know like X amount in staff, X amount in marketing dollars equals Y in revenue. Like you should know that stuff. Sure. You know, I just I, I think if you aren't paying attention, I think it's a big mistake. You know, you don't you don't have to get you don't have to be a CPA. You should, you should like, you know, you can get in QuickBooks, yeah. pay like 20 bucks a month and it does it for you. Yeah. It's, it's not complicated. Dude, I, I, well, I, and, I, and I learned, like, I didn't even know until I, I mean, you know, there's so many people in the company that you don't know. And then you, you finally get a chance to get to know them. It's like, man, these guys, they're awesome. That's how I felt about you. Like, you know, I watched you put your stuff in QuickBooks. I'm like, you do that yourself. Like to me, I'm thinking like you're solving world problems. Like, <laughs> and you're just going into QuickBooks, but Dude, it's crazy when you've broken down the stuff you did with your numbers, you know, you've done it at our conference, the spreadsheet you've had. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's pretty awesome what you've been able to do. And, and from the production side, the building side, it's crazy. Um, we appreciate you. We've watched you. Uh, I've learned more than you can even imagine on that. Spot. Like I always thought, dude, I'm not, I'm not smart. I'm not stupid, but I'm not that smart, but I can copy people yeah. and I can, and I don't care about asking questions either. You know what I mean? Like I really could give two rips. No, um, but I've learned so much about how to actually just run it. And I don't think we talk about it enough running a real business. Like we teach how to sell. That's fine. We can teach how to get people selling too, but then what do you do with all that stuff? Yeah. I think that's where I struggled with. And that's what you've really, I mean, even kill him, you know, kill him hired you <laughs> and he leans on you for that stuff, which is, and that just speaks volumes to you guys, the relationship you have. I think that's impressive. Um, all right, so can we go longer? Yes, perfect. Um, I if, talk a lot. I'm sorry. I, no, I love see this, and I could do this for for hours. It's just people. I don't know if people realize how much value is in this. So if I want to start, if I'm new, the people we're telling to ignore us. Let's talk to them. Cool. You want to start? You want to get in the integrity conversation in the next yeah. 24 months? What would you do? How if you were starting today? What would you do? Yeah, I would. I would start. Building or which I did start building early to be clear, mm -hmm. All right? But I would I would take some of the advice on like understanding not everybody's going to do this and you can't drag people to success like all everybody's talking about it now, you know the things we've learned, you know. But I think what I did really well, I didn't I wasn't like Kilman dude. I didn't recruit war market. That wasn't my deal. I didn't I didn't I had a few but nobody did. I have zero war market in my agency today. Okay, like I just that's, not that's my crazy. Thing. But I got really good at building through the war market of my cold. Okay. So you bring them in cold. I like, and I didn't have a recruiter. You did it all. Okay. No, I was I the recruiter, this. dude. And then I taught agents how to recruit. Like everything for me was what can I make duplicatable? 
Okay. That's all. This is the whole thing. Anything I do, I want to be able to teach someone else to do it. So now I can have double the effort. And if I teach another one and they teach another one, now we got four people doing it. You know what I mean? It was sure. always about simplicity that I can teach. So you can do it too. Okay. And for me, as I started talking to a lot of people, I realized like, dude, they probably know people who want an opportunity, right? What a, like you get a new agent that you go like, you want to build? What do the new agents always say? Once I figure it out. Yeah. It drives me nuts. Yeah, me too. <laughs> That's because they think like recruiting and training are the same. So I had to learn how to separate the two. Okay. Right. And so for me, I, I, I would, I learned how to take the burden off of people. So they, they would tell other people about the opportunity okay. and not feel like they had to do all the training. And you can use any stupid example, like this equipment we're staring at. Okay. I'm assuming you're as bad as me and don't know how to use any of it. Correct. I, I have no idea what I'm doing. But if they were like, let's pretend I'm new or let's pretend you're new. Sure. Right? And I'm like, hey, dude, your son's Frankie also, right? Frankie Jr. Right? Yeah. So Frankie's going to pay Frankie a couple hundred grand a year, teach you how to use this equipment. Okay. okay. It'll take you a couple months, but you'll learn it. He'll teach you how, what all the buttons mean, all the stuff, the volume, all of it, the mics, everything. And dude, also, we need more people. So anybody you know that would like to make 200 grand to come in to learn how to use this equipment also, can you let them know? And Frankie will train them while they train you. Got it. Would you wait till you learned how to use it all before you told all your buddies? Heck no. You do it right away. Yeah. Right. So why can't you do that here? Can you just tell all your buddies about the same opportunity you have and I'll train them while I train you? Cool thing is, as you, if you really want to build this thing, I'll teach you how to do that as we go. Again, right now, you don't have to worry about it. And cool thing is, you'll get the volume credit, and you'll make a couple bucks every time someone makes a sale. And I just made it super easy. Yeah. And again, just took that burden off of them. And then the way I would always word it when I interviewed people or got referrals, because that brought in, I, you give me a couple names anyway. No like, doubt. Hey, who else do you know? You know, man, I would always go, hey, Frank, let me ask you a question. So do you want to sell life insurance for the rest of your life, or do you have any interest in building an agency? No, I want to build. And at the very least, dude, it would it would be like, what do you mean? Right. Just the way, do you want to sell life insurance for the rest of your life? Or yeah. Do you have any interest in build? The way I worded it, dude, it would always spark at least a conversation. Sure. And then I could, they, I'd get that answer. Well, I would build, but I want to wait till I do. Yeah. And then I would give an, I'd make up an analogy. This I just made up on the spot. Absolutely. Like Best Buy, Waffle, you can use anything. anything. Yeah. And they would go, oh, oh, so I just have to. Give them to you? I'm like, yeah. And yeah. I treat everybody like they're direct. Sure. Same as Kilomet, because Kilomet didn't hire me, actually. I was four in depth. Uh, right, right, right. Right? But yeah. he treated like he did. That's right. So I was trained, especially from Sean. It's like, we're looking at, uh, I think, Jake Conan in my office. Yep. Dude, he's like nine deep from Sean. Crazy. Sean works with him. Yep. Like, no doubt. That's how That's how it's it about it. Yeah, that's right. So I just use that simple conversation, release that burden of they have to train them, and then they would just bring me names. And then you bring me three or four names. You, I'm going to ask those three or four the same thing. Hey, do you want to sell life insurance for the rest of your life? Or do you have any interest in building? Now, and do you give, call those three or four with yeah. them? Yeah. So, situationally, sometimes okay. they'll refer them over. Sometimes I'll get a number. I like most a war, like a handoff. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean, I prefer that. Okay. If they're local, they bring them into the office, whatever. But I, it got people promoting us. Gotcha. Without them feeling like they had to do the training part. Cause that's, uh, that's what I learned. It is. It ain't, it's not that they're, they won't recruit. It's right. that they don't they feel don't like they can they're train. Gonna they're going to, yeah. So I just take that burden they'll off them to. fully. I just got really good at that. They're not. And that, like that aggravates the living daylights out of me. Cause I, where we came from. Yeah. We were so. The opposite. Yeah. Yeah. You know Project. what I mean? And, and we didn't want to come off as that yeah. because I think we had such a bad experience and, and you know, there weren't people making money. People were struggling and they were screaming that For they sure. weren't. But uh, if we just started doing that earlier, I think it could have. Now, yeah. you you were at the old company for how long? A year. A little over a year. A year. But you were had a full-time job. You were a CPA, right? You were. I wasn't. A, I was just an accountant. You were an accountant. Was okay. I was like 15 months I did that. Okay. Um, and were you, but you were part-time. For 12 of them. For 12. I was three months full-time when FFL started. Okay. So you had just transferred. To full, okay. Uh -huh. Gotcha. 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 So did you go to all the events that they charge you to, like $500? Oh, yeah. and, I yeah. paid for the bracelet and the yeah. lunch and yeah, the no, books no. and the, yeah. The $400 lunch that was oh, macaroni, yeah. cheese, and fried yeah. chicken? Yep. Yeah. Okay, I paid got for it. it. Okay. Um, yeah, we, I, I was so dead set against it because I didn't want to yeah. be like that. And, and, it, and it hurt. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of taking the things that were good that they did, because there were some things that were not not bad. For sure. We just kind of like, eh. Nah. You know what I mean? Um, and good for you, you didn't. Yeah. So, War Market, do you have a recruiter now? Um, we have one in the office today, yeah. Okay. How long did you How long He's did brand you new, go? Though. Okay. Did you, is this your first, like, have you had a recruiter in the past, or was it always you just did it? Just me. I never had a recruiter to write, like, literally, I think, two months before the integrity deal closed. It was my that's first crazy. recruiter. See, people aren't willing to work as hard as you work, though. I That's what I believe. I agree. Um, they want their recruiters to build their agency. And, and I'm like, I ain't mad at a recruiter. There is a need. No, absolutely. I, there is a spot for them. But if, if the recruiter's doing more recruiting than you, I mean, unless wrong. you. Uh, yeah. Something's definitely wrong. That makes a lot of sense. And, uh, and yeah. dude, me included, I think Killman I need to do taught that me more. about like eagles and ducks. And he's Explain. like, eagles can see ducks, but ducks can't see eagles. Mm -hmm. And if you read like Maxwell stuff, like levels of leadership, you know, even if we just went on a scale of one to 10, like, I don't know, which if Sean Mike's a nine or a 10, you know what I mean? Like, what is that? What are we? Right. And what's the recruiter? Gotcha. And, and you tend to attract what you are. Right. So rate your recruiter, not on a, you know what I mean? I Just understand. in yeah, terms yeah. of like how good can they recruit compared to Sean Mike? Sure. Sure. Dude, not, they're, even, they're, not even close. What's the average recruiter going to be compared to Sean? A two. A one. Okay. Yeah, what no, what I mean, is a one or two going to attract? A two, a one or two. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> it's the reality, man. Yeah. You know, now can, is there a place for them? Yes. Do you have to, can you teach them stuff? Yes. Can they learn? Yes. But dude, they're not going to build your agency. They're, no, okay. They're just no, you're not. Right. They're you're not. Right. They're not. I love all you recruiters watching. You're not, it just, they're, and we I, always, I always do this, like name one person who built it big with the recruiter building it for them. Give me that agency. I don't have that one. Nobody's yeah, given no. it to me yet. <laughs> I ask everywhere we go. Right. No one's told me who that is yet. Okay. Dude, that's, I mean, dude, that right there in itself is, is worth its weight in gold. And, and here's, the, here's the rub. Like we get so focused on working with people that we have, working with people that we have. And we go, well, I don't have time to let the recruiter do it. And it's not intentional. Like, dude, if you're working, you're working. Then what if you're working on this, 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 or this? Like, dude, that makes a ton of sense. Yeah. And we all need to start doing that a lot more. Yeah, there's things they can do. They can help. They can add. But message people. Yeah, I mean, again, they can, and if, even if they're doing 40% of what you're doing, hey, it's extra. I ain't sure. mad at it. No doubt. But when that's the only recruiting, yeah, that's through, bad. I just, dude, I just never seen it work. That's all I'm saying. No, dude, that's, that's yeah. priceless, man. Dude, I, I, I appreciate you coming up here. Yeah. This has Happy been amazing. Here, so guys, John, again, you've been here since day one. Yeah. From zero to 13,000, 14,000 families a month has what? Two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. You've six X'd in two years. Yeah. If you're not listening to what he's and you got tons of content out, yeah. like I see it, yeah, like I I like listening to John because he makes you make it very simple, appreciate it, and you say it in a way that makes me feel like I don't want to say it because it's not a bad thing. Like I go, dude, why? I'm just that's I'm an idiot. Like why don't you just simplify? It? But that's a good thing to me because it just when you train you you really dumb it down to where anybody can understand it. And that's, that's, that's hard to do. So, dude, thank you so much for coming in. I greatly appreciate you. My dude. Guys, Wetmore is a beast. Look him up. Follow him. Friend request him. Watch the stuff on YouTube. But if you want to learn how to run a clean business and build it really fast, this is one of the main people I would watch. So, until next time, make it a big week. Appreciate you all. Thank you, John. Appreciate you, bro. Later, guys.